Hey everyone, this is my SharePoint Questions and today I'm going to show you how I would upload a document with metadata. Now I was watching Reza and Shane Young and I was seeing how they did it and they'd like to go to JSON and update the metadata on the Power Automate side. Uh, one thing that I noticed is if I wanted to make change to that app, I would have to update Power Automate and I would have to update Power Apps in order to make a change to that app. So I came up with a different solution. So on one of my previous videos, I showed you how to add an attachment control and an attachment to SharePoint. So I'm just going to go ahead and demonstrate that real quick. I have a file. It's called Microsoft 2.pdf. I have set up a Power Automate with a trigger and a create file. Now all this I went through in my previous video, so if you want to watch that, you can. But today I'm going to show you how to add metadata to this file. My, if I run my attachment control and run the Power Automate button, you'll see that my SharePoint library is updated with the document. Now I do have a column here called doc type and this is my metadata column that I was talking about updating. So if I wanted to update that without using JSON, what I was thinking is that I should just have a form. And this form can have my documents. I'm going to make it one column with a few of the columns. And so we have title and document type. And I'm going to go ahead and add name on there just so we can identify it. It should be read only. So yeah, name is read only. So right now this form is not connected to anything. So I'm going to create a gallery. This gallery is going to be connected to the same thing, the document library. And here I'm going to put the name and the title. So you'll notice that title is blank right now. I'm going to delete a few of these things that I didn't want actually. I like to use the um, image one because it does come with labels and everything first. So now I have a gallery. So let's go ahead and add a second item on there. I'm going to add a picture just to show that you can update anything to the Power Automate. Now if you notice I updated and sent it but my gallery did not update. So I just want to add a button. Now this is not going to be the final solution. I just want to show you the pieces to build this. So refresh the documents library. I'm going to name that refresh. So when I hit my refresh button you can see I now have two options. But right now my form is not displaying anything. That's because we need to set up in the advanced properties the items. So in the items it's going to use my, I'm going to call it gallery doc. Oh, that's already being used. I'm going to call it gallery docs. And so in the items of the advanced property of the form, I'm going to say gallery docs dot selected. So now you can see my form is populated based on which gallery item is selected. So this is where I started thinking. I was like, okay, I only wanted to select the document that I just uploaded. And if you notice, I have the attachment control panel set up to a max attachments of one. I don't want to up, upload a bunch of documents with the same metadata. If I wanted to do that I would use document sets in SharePoint. And so I'm not going to go into document sets but uh, for this scenario we're just going to have one attachment with one set of metadata. So I was thinking the gallery I want to filter it the document library based on I want to filter the documents library 
based on the file name with extension. So I could base it on the last data card value attachments name. So if we put this in a label, I'm just going to put that in a label right up here. You can see that this formula, the last data card value 10 attachments, so that's uh, my data card value in my attachment control panel dot name is equal to picture BMP. So if I set that equal, the file name extension with the last data card value name, it then filters my gallery. But then we have a major problem that a lot of people would not want to deal with and that is delegation. So I was looking through all of the columns in in my document library and only two I noticed didn't have a delegation warning and that was title and ID but my idea was to use title but when I save a file using my power automate button my title field is actually blank so if we if I copy this and then I just show you the the documents you'll notice that my title field is actually blank so I was thinking okay we're going to update it in Power Automate. Why not? We're already running Power Automate once. Why not just update it in Power Automate? So I go to SharePoint and Update File Properties is what we're looking for. And we're going to connect it to our same SharePoint site with the document library. And the ID is going to be the one from our created item. Now the reason I am only updating title and not all my other metadata is because what if there's changes to this power app in the future right I want to make it simple so I can easily update it so my idea was just to change and write the name to the title so if I had a long list of metadata I don't have to run this JSON and compose it and pull out all the items and then pull that in Power apps. That's what uh, Reza and Shane Young were doing. I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just trying to make this more simple. So I'm going to save. So my Power app is triggered on a button click. It creates the file and then it updates the file property, just the name. So now if I go back to my Power apps, I resave my Picture BMP. Power Automate runs it. I refresh you can now see my title is populated that's great now I can filter it's filtered on my title without the delegation warning that's exactly what I want so now I was thinking okay well I don't want there to be two buttons to refresh and to run my power automate right I want my my gallery to automatically refresh and to do that I'm going to use a timer so this timer is going to run I'm going to give it 1.5 seconds so that's 1500 so my duration if I were to come up here it's a duration of 1500 that's 1 1.5 seconds none of my power automates took more than a second but I'm just giving it a, a little bit extra just in case it's a huge file right now in my Power Automate button, I want to combine the timer and the refresh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new line and I'm going to update context. I'm going to create a variable, my timer, and I'm going to set it to true when I hit this button. So right now, when if I were to hit this button on select, it's going to set my variable my timer to true. So on the timer property, I'm going to go to the start to start and it's going to be based off variable my timer. So now I have a timer that starts my timer of 1.5 seconds. On timer end, I'm going to refresh my documents library 
And then I'm also going to update context variable my timer set it to false. So I'm going to set my variable back to false. So let's go ahead and try again. I'm going to delete my refresh button now. I'm going to update, add a new file. And it's going to be Microsoft 4. You notice everything is blank. Run my Power Automate. It's going to run my timer for 1.5 seconds, update and show my gallery and my form. Now the next thing I wanted to do was create a pop-out menu. You know, maybe I don't want everyone to see all this. They won't understand. I need some good UX. So the next thing I did was I took an icon, a rectangle, and I wanted to make this a pop-out menu. I mean, you could make this a moving sliding pop-out menu if you'd rather do that. You know, whatever you want to do, however you want to design it, that's up to you. But I'm just showing you the way you can do it easily and quickly. So I just got to make these things a lot smaller. Bring them to the front, reorder. Bring to the front. Take my form, reorder, bring to the front. change the color of this rectangle because I don't like that blue. I'll make it like an ice blue. So I have my form. I have a gallery that's filtered on the item that I have just submitted. And I'm going to just go ahead and make this like take up the whole screen actually right now. I think that's a better idea to hide the other uh, properties. And so you could have a long list of metadata, right? You could have a, a lot of things. And so I'm going to add a label. And the label is going to say, please update the metadata. And you can say whatever you want. You know, maybe people don't understand. Please update the metadata. And then I need a, a submit button. And we're gonna, we can make it a button, we can make it an icon, we can do anything we want. But for this one, I'm just gonna say save. So this button is going to submit form. The form that I have is called form three. So that's this form. It's going to submit that form when I type in my metadata. So now I'm going to group all of those things together. I'm going to group the button. Let me just go ahead and rename it real quick. Button save. Button save. And then I'm going to group the label, the form, the gallery. I'm going to group them all together. And then to group them, you press Control G. So now I have a group. Rename group my pop out. So, with my group, I want the visibility, the visible property, I want to set it equal to a variable. And so this variable, I'm going to call variable my pop out. Right? And so right now I have a bunch of red items that say, hey, I don't recognize that variable. So I'm going to go to my button of my Power Automate. And I'm going to set up another update context. So update context variable my pop out to true. And I forgot to group my rectangle. I got to add that in there too. So on the visibility property, it's going to be variable my pop out. All right. So now all of that is invisible, right? We can't see that. All right, so now what I actually want to do, and I just thought about this, I want to move this variable pop out and I want to move it to the timer actually. On timer end, it's going to set that to true. So let's go ahead and try another one. 
picture two. I'm going to hit the power automate button. It's going to take 1.5 seconds. It appears. We have my save button. I'm going to add, I'm going to, on my save button, on select, On select, I couldn't find it in there for some reason. Let's see here. On select, there we go. I want to hide my pop out. So I'm going to update context variable my pop out, change it back to false when I save. So now I have my picture two. This is my metadata. I hit save, it hides my pop out. I come to SharePoint and it updates the metadata of my columns. Now the reason I did this is because if I were to add another column of metadata, I want it to be simple for me to edit my Power App. If you use the JSON method that Shane Young or Reza use, then you're going to have to update your Power Automate and your Power Apps and do all the JSON behind it. So thanks for watching. If I were to update the metadata, that's how I would do it. I would do most of the work on the Power Apps side. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.